I'd like to work through a specific example in which we can use the method of Lagrange multiplier. It's one of my favorite techniques in multivariable calculus. Uh, I'm not going to try to go through in this particular example explaining all the ideas behind Lagrange multipliers. I've got a whole website for that, uh, Introduction to Lagrange Multipliers website, that gives some conceptual basis for it. Here I'm going to just go through an example, show you how it can be used, and a case where it might come up. And that's my plan. So here's our story. Uh, Anne lives at a house at the origin of coordinates near a river and a lake. And uh, I will put up here a nice little picture of Anne's house as a red dot and the river and the lake. And by a crazy coincidence, if Anne's house is the origin of coordinates, then the river and the lake happen to be described, their, their borders happen to be described by the function g of x, y equals 0, where this function is this crazy cubic in x and quartic in y thing. Uh, who knew? Just happens to be the case. Obviously, this is an um, empirical model. You could come up with whatever constraint function you needed to describe some particular case. This is our example. It seems contrived, but the cool thing is you can describe a lot of shapes via sufficiently complicated looking function. So here's our plan. We want to, so what we want to do, Anne needs some water. She needs to get some, some nice cool water from either the river or the lake, and she wants to know what's the closest point that she can get to. You assume everything's flat, equally easy to walk every direction. What's the closest point that she can get to going from her house to the water to go there and back as fast as possible? And so we might ask, what's the closest water? Or maybe we want to be even more specific and say, what's the closest fresh flowing water from the river? So the first one, river or lake, your call. Second one, more specific. Well, how do we answer those questions? The idea is that this is an optimization problem, like so many problems in calculus are. And the, it's an optimization problem where we want to minimize the distance subject to a constraint. The constraint is that this function g of x, y equals 0. The point x, y that we choose will be the point where, uh, where she goes to get the water. And when I say minimize the distance, technically the distance is the square root of this function, capital D, that I've written down. But because distance is never negative, it turns out that minimizing capital D is equivalent to minimizing the actual distance. So uh, we're happy. This, this is an easier thing to deal with, no messy square roots. You can minimize it with the square roots if you wanted, but yuck. So this is just as good. So that's our goal. And there are multiple ways of doing this. Again, I'm going to focus on the way of doing it using Lagrange multipliers, just because that's the topic here. You could also do it using brute force, you know, especially if you've got a computer to back you up. So let's talk about this. Uh, we've got our picture. And generally, if you're going from the origin and trying to find what the closest point is, what you can do is just look at circles around the origin. Here's some sample circles equally spaced in distance, uh, concentric around Anne's house at the origin. And so maybe the first circle is the places that Anne can get to in one minute, then in two, then in three, that sort of thing. And so the question is, which point is going to be closest? Well, if you look at this picture, you can immediately tell that the point that's going to be closest will be the lake rather than the river because as you count outward, the first circle that touches, there's a circle there that touches the lake even before it touches the river. So you can see that generally. But how do we find the specific points where that's true? How do we find the specific points where we go and uh, where, where Anne should go to go to the closest point of the lake? Or if she wants fresh water, the closest point of the river? That's where Lagrange multipliers comes in. What we actually want to do is look for circles that will touch those points. So let me wander over here and actually start doing some Lagrange multipliers calculations. Remember how Lagrange multipliers works. It's a vector equation. And what we say is that the gradient of the function that we want to maximize or minimize, the gradient of capital D for us, is equal to that scalar function lambda times the gradient of the constraint function. So this is a vector equation. We can write it in x and y components. And the x component will come out to be that 2x equals lambda times gradient of g. This is the x component, the partial with respect to x. What will it be? 6x squared minus 4x minus 8. That's the x partial of g. And then the y component will be 2y, the partial of d with respect to y, equals lambda times, 
And again, we can take the gradient, uh, uh, take the gradient here, the, the, the gradient of the G, look at its Y component, partial respect to Y, that ends up being Y cubed over four plus two Y minus four. So there we have our two equations that come out of Lagrange multipliers here, that come, come out of this vector equation, our two component equations. And we can count that up. Looking at it, we have three equations and three unknowns. We've got this one and this one. Two equations are, we've got unknowns x and y and lambda. So we've got two equations, and here's our third, g of x, y equals zero. Three equations and three unknowns. You can solve that any way you'd like, really. Uh, anything you'd like to do, um, um, it's a pain. And I guess looking at these, I would probably eliminate lambda by maybe taking a quotient of these two equations. So x over y will equal 6x squared minus 4x uh, minus, minus 8 and divided by y cubed over 4 plus 2y minus 4. That quotient, there we go, we've gotten rid of lambda. Now we've got two equations and two unknowns. And if I really wanted to plow through this, this is a quadratic equation in x in the end, with y's as treated as constant coefficients. This is quadratic in x, you get two solutions. Plug those in for x over here. It's going to be ugly. You're going to have cubic, the coefficients will probably be cubic in y, so you'll end up uh, ugly stuff, y to the ninth or something over here. It's going to be gross. But the point is you can do it. You can solve this and find what will be our, uh, what will be our solutions. I'd use a computer, really. Sounds like the way to do it. And that'll tell you what those points are. Now, for the record, let me just point, remind you of what this means. And again, we can look at our pretty picture to illustrate this. What's going on, it, but when we set this vector equation up, is we're saying the direction in which the distance increases the fastest has to be the same as the direction perpendicular to the constraint function, to the, to the surface of constraint, or to the line of the constraint function, the curve of the constraint function. Those directions have to be the same. And if you look at, it, it turns out there are going to be three real solutions to this. And if you look at, I'll put it over here, uh, our, um, our, our graph, and we show those three solutions that where the circles that are, the circles showing circles of increasing distance, where the circles are exactly tangent to the surface of constraint, those are the points that we care about. And there are three, of, there are three solutions that come up. Let me write down what those solutions are. I cleverly had a computer work out the numerics for me earlier. Let me just copy those solutions down. Three solutions um, in xy form, that's 1.29 and 0.855. 1.69, oh, that's not 9. 1.69 and 2.22. And then the third one is negative 2.12, rounded off, of course, and 0 0.268. Those are our three solutions. And the distances for each one, the first one has a distance from Ann's house of 1.54 in whatever the heck units these are. Here's 2.79, and here's 2.13. And so those are our three, th those are our three distances, those are our three points, and you can immediately see in the graph that has those, uh, that has those concentric circles, you can immediately see that the smallest circle, 1.29 and 0.855 seems about right for where that circle touches the lake, the near side of the lake. The next closest circle, next smallest circle, is ne at a negative x, and that's because it's the one that touches the river. If she wants river water, she's got to go to that point, this x, y, shown there. And then finally, here's the one that goes to the far side of the lake. That's not what we really care about here, why she want to go walk through the lake to get straight to that point. But, you know, if you want to know how far away is the far side of the lake, our equations happen to have given that to us as well. And it all corresponds to those three circles that happen to be tangent to our, our equation of constraint, our g of x, y equals zero. Our three circles tangent to that, that's what we've got. So that's how Lagrange multipliers can give us an answer to a problem like this. It, we get these answers, and it's all set up this way. Three equations and three unknowns comes out nicely. Just for the record, you could, if you really wanted to, uh, rather than doing Lagrange multipliers here, you could take this equation. Uh, it's 
cubic in x, so I suppose uh, you could take this and find the three solutions for x in terms of y. Uh, find, you know, it's ugly, but you can do it. It's you're not, you know, like it's a quintic or something where it's impossible. Here you can find those three solutions and then plug those in for x here. Find the, all the solutions for y in terms of those x's and then work backward, find what x is again. You could totally do that. More power to you. Uh, but it's going to be a pain. If you do it, again, this is like where computers can help us. And eh, there are different methods. You have to choose which method you like better. If you don't want to use Grunge multipliers, you could just do that. Figure out, find this d as a function of just y instead of both. And then go ahead, take a derivative of that. Uh, take a derivative of, of d with maybe with respect to, if I've done it with respect to x actually. Take a derivative of d with respect to x. And uh, if, you, if you do take that derivative of d with respect to x and plot that, the maximum and minimum of the derivative, of course, will give you that. And you have to plot multiple branches because there are several different solutions. There's cube roots and things involved. Here, I've shown uh, really quick what you get there. So you could do this in a brute force way, too, like I just described. But the Lagrange multipliers method is pretty slick. And it's that three equations and three, three unknowns that we talked about. So I hope that gives you another nice little example of how Lagrange multipliers work and what you're doing when you do them. It's just a matter of setting up gradient of the function you want to maximize equals the scalar function times the gradient of the constraint. Again, that's for one constraint, two dimensions, pretty simple, but it gives you the idea.